Welcome back to another Learning Layer segment. We are continuing our conversation with Joe Kerrigan as he gets ready for his CISSP. So Joe, you are, you're in it. I'm, I'm in it now, yes. <laughs> you are. Now's the time that <laughs> tries men's souls, as Thomas Indeed. Payne would Very trying. say or right. So catch us up. What are you doing? Where are you at? Where are you at in your studies? Uh, so I'm, I'm running behind. There's been you know, it's, uh, we're coming up on a holiday and it's, you know, crazy in my house right now. Just haven't had the time yep. uh, to sit down and commit to this, but, you know, that that's going to have to change. Um, asset security is, you know, I, I got, I've got the under the understanding. I'd like to take the test uh, to see how I do because this is one of the areas in the, in the diagnostic test I didn't do very well in. And okay. I was kind of shocked by that, not doing yeah. very well in asset security. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward actually to taking that test to see how I how I do. Now, I at the same time I want to don't want to lose the information I've got from domain 1. Nice. So I'm taking using the tool with the question pool okay. uh, to you know every other day or so I've been taking a test on domain 1. Okay. Just make a 20 question test and see how well I do. And I'm doing I'm doing okay in those. I'm coming in around uh you know I'm I'm getting what I would consider to be a passing grade. I'd like to get better grades, you know, better better scores, but what I like about this tool is that if I miss a question, I can look at the question, understand why I got the question wrong. There's a, a little blurb underneath that tells you what was what the right answer was and why, mm -hmm. which is of paramount importance. But there also are links to the to the material, so you can go right to the video to see where that was covered in in the uh, in the lessons. Right. Right. Um, so two two quick comments about that. First, what Joe is referring to is something called our question bank tool. And basically, it helps get really granular on very specific areas that you need to study. So for example, you can create a custom quiz of any length. Um, sounds like Joe's using it for, to create 20 question quizzes. But if you only have five minutes, you can do a three minute, you know, question or a, or a five minute uh, quiz. I'm sorry, five question quiz. But the point is, you can also select the domain you want to study in. Correct. And the subdomain. And even some subdomains under that. So it gets very granular if you want to do deep dives. And that leads me to, to my second comment, Joe, which is about your results. It's actually normal to see a little bit of volatility within the QBank because it is so specific, right? Okay. It is so granular. Good. So I wouldn't, you know, freak out if one quiz, you get a 90 and the next time you get a 70. Right. Like that just helps you pinpoint exactly what you need to study. Excellent. That's good to know. So, sounds like you have the QBank down and you have a good routine for domain one. Can you talk a little bit more about like specifically what you're doing for domain two and what that looks like? The, the same process I did for domain one, which is where I've, I've gone through and I've taken the notes and I have my own, uh, you know, I have a, a Google Doc file where, and for, I, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I have two monitors. So, I keep the Google Doc file on one monitor and I keep the the video on the other monitor and I'm watching the video and typing the notes in as I'm, as I'm watching the videos, right. um, keeping notes. When it comes time for the, the actual class lecture, um, I am using the uh, printout of the, um, of, of the, the class notes yep. that, that yep. N2K provides as a PDF. I've printed some of those out. Uh, th this time for domain two, I did something I didn't do for domain one, which was I went and read the book mm. and I actually spent a lot of time, uh, in the book, and I read actually the the readings for Domain One as well. I kind of skimmed through those as well. That took a little bit of time, so I'm I'm doing a deeper dive on Domain Two, which is why the time commitment is a little bit sure. greater, I think. But sure. um, makes sense. And by the way, I do love what what you're doing because you're basically getting because from the textbook to the video library that you're going through, and then also like the longer the longer lecture style, it is a lot of repeated information. But, right. you know, it's not like it's it's redundant or it's exactly the same, but it's you're getting the same information in different modalities. It's reinforcement. It's reinforcement. That's right. exactly right. And specifically within different modalities to wonk out for a second, learning science shows that's really good for knowledge retention. Yeah, good. So what you're doing, you know, it might be natural to you. It makes sense. But, you know, for maybe some people haven't studied in a while or haven't flexed that muscle, that's kind of what you have to do. You have to immerse yourself in the content in a lot of different ways. Yeah, it, it's... 
and that's what I'm trying to do this time. Or well, well, at least with domain two. Domain one, I wasn't all that concerned because I did fairly well in the diagnostic. So, but I did go back and review some of the some of the major points. I'm curious. Is there anything in like domain two in your studies that just kind of stand out to you being difficult or hard to wrap your head around? Any questions about the content that you might have? Not, nothing stands out as like difficult to. Uh, to get my head around. Everything makes sense. It's all very logical. So Joe, since you don't have any content questions for me, I have a content question for you. Pop quiz, you ready? Okay. What's the difference between a data owner and a data custodian? A data owner is the person who is actually the uh, the person that owns the data. This is usually someone pretty high up in the yeah. in the food chain, usually like the like the uh, some some higher level management. Uh, the data custodian is the one who's responsible for maintaining the uh, the appropriate access, the appropriate um, authentication, and uh, what's the other? C I A. Hold on, just a minute. Give me a second. So okay, here it is. The data custodian is the one who is responsible for maintaining all the CIA stuff around yep. the you know that it's only accessible to people who should have access. That the data is correct. Um, you know that they're the people where the rubber meets the road. Actually. Yes, that's right. That's right. The the confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and the authorization and authentication you're talking about, that would really right. be wrapped up in the C, in the talking C. about the access Correct. control. Yep. So, all right, look, I, look, I, I believed you when you said you know your stuff in domain two and you didn't have any questions, but I just had to, I had to verify. Trust sure. or verify, right? Sure. That's probably something in domain two of the two. <laughs> yep. Pretty meta. Well, Joe, good luck with the studies. It seems like you're on the right path. You're doing the good work. And again, you will get to domain three when you get to domain three. But like you said, you just got to make the time and carve out the time. Yeah, I've got to do that this week. Awesome. Well, ne- we'll hold you accountable because next time we talk, we'll do a deep dive into domain three. Excellent. <laughs>